All right, that's our job for today. We're replacing a leaky carrier evaporator coil. It has a couple leaks in it, so we're gonna put a new one in. And vacuum and recharge the system. And that's what we're doing today. All right, I've reassembled our carrier coil here. Uh, new evaporator is a slant coil. Uh, people who work on carrier will be familiar with that. Uh, it mounts one time down in this area here. That screw, again on the other side, the same thing. You have these mounting legs here that clip on the drain pan on the coil, holds it up. There's another one on the other side, as well as a screw on the other side that screws up into the top of the air handler. And all that stuff helps to keep it in place. All right, we got it installed. You can see it sitting in the air handler. There's the blower housing. There is our slab coil. We have our suction line, entering liquid line in this area here. There's a piston. No TXV on this coil. Uh, you get some of the ins and outs here. You can see in there the suction manifold. And you see how it fits in there. There is the screw that we screw up into to get it anchored to the air handler. So once you take this out, the whole assembly slides out. So it's not too bad. But when you get a warranty coil or a replacement coil, they give you the coil and you reuse these. So you sort of have to disassemble things, put them back together. Uh, unlike something like Goodman where you buy a coil and the whole shebang comes there. So there you go. All right. I have it all fitted up here. We have our line dryer in front of the orifice section inside the unit. We have our suction line heading back in there fitted up. Got it bent around up to the bottom of the line dryer. Uh, not as perfect as I'd like it because that line dryer is pretty heavy. And I uh, bet you didn't know Parker made one of these. It is a line holder upper for when your line dryer is heavy and wants to fall out. It also doubles as the box it comes in. So I got it all fitted up. I got to start the nitrogen and get it welded up. All right, now I'm pulling a vacuum on the system since it uh, has pressure. It's a new field piece vacuum gauge, uh, thanks to, I think his name is TSA Tech. Uh, kind of inspired me to move along and get with the times. And I have that now, I appreciate that. And so we're pulling the vacuum down, uh, target 500 microns. So, we'll see how it goes. All right, we're at a happy 373-ish microns, and that strange insignia stands for stable vacuum. So we are about to move on. So I'll show you a look at the gauge. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, a lot of gauges out there. Uh, this seemed reasonable, and I, I like field piece stuff, so I chose this one. Uh, so that's the way to do all right, now we're charging her up. I'm about almost five pounds into it. Uh, got about a seven pound factory charge plus line set. Probably about eight pounds total. Uh, so we're all on track, besides a little bit of rain. Uh, there's my heat gun to heat up the refrigerant cylinder to help it along. But we're not that far out. Got a nitrogen bottle, some of my other stuff. But we'll be wrapping it up pretty soon. All right, I'm gonna do a little demonstration uh, on the calculation of superheat while we're here. Now, this is the fixed orifice system. That's why we're doing superheat. If it was a TXV, we would uh, do the subcooling. Uh, superheat is the amount of heat added to the refrigerant after it uh, goes into the gaseous stage in the evaporator. Uh, so let's say at 45 degrees, the liquid refrigerant turns into gas, and it comes back at 55 degrees. It means there's 10 degrees of superheat. So that's what we're trying to figure out. And you can figure this out from the gauges too, but it's, it's nice to have fun little gadgets to do for you. All right. So as we see here, the superheat is 29.2 so far. So I'm thinking we a little low. Uh, excessive superheat is an indication that there's not enough refrigerant. And imagine it, you have refrigerant going into the evaporator and it disperses and evaporates too quickly because there's not enough of it. Therefore, it's gonna heat up a little bit more. But I also know that we have to give it five or 10 minutes of runtime before we really know for sure that that's the case. And we've only had it on for about uh, two or three minutes. So, so 28, it's come down a little bit already. So 67 pounds of pressure. Uh, it's about 80 degrees outside, so that's not too far off. It's about 77, 78 inside, so that makes a difference too. Uh, 
Yellow Jacket coupling. If I want to hook up a charging manifold to this, I hook it up here and go back to the uh, R22. And then I actually have regulated how much refrigerant I'm putting in with this. It seems to work pretty good. That way I can keep this uh, in the loop so I can keep working on it while I'm doing it. So we see we're down to 26. So let's give it a few more minutes. We'll check on it. Uh, and while we do that, we'll calculate the superheat that we require uh, out here today. Let me get out my trusty uh, piece of paper here. Uh, I think Fritz has a standalone that does this, so if you want to see that, I'm sure one of his videos will have it. Uh, it's pretty cool. So when I come and do some money, I'm going to buy it. Uh, we're looking at about 80 degrees inside, and it's not quite 80 inside. So we're kind of right in between there, so let's go with 15 degrees of superheat, which is good because that's what's on here. So if we raise it up, we're going to look for, uh, get it up here, we're at 67, so let's go with 68. And at 15 degrees, we should be 54. So it's requiring 15 degrees of superheat, and the line should be 54 degrees. Uh, of course, right now, we have 25 degrees of superheat, so we got too much. So we're probably going to add a little bit of refrigerant, we're talking ounces. So we'll do that, and then we'll revisit this see what it looks like. Alright, here we are looking at the superheat calculator again and at 80 degrees inside it's like 76-ish so you're not looking at about 13 degrees or so and if we look up here 13.2 so very good right on target with the well-matched Goodman carrier carrier handler upstairs and the five-year-old Goodman outside it's a uh, Bestardo system was what I call this. So, there we go. We're all done here. Ready to go to the next one. Water leaking into a ceiling. Sounds fun.